Hello viewers, this is Not Too Fast here. Check out this brand new Android 8.0 car stereo I installed into this vehicle. It has this large color LCD touchscreen, GPS navigation, Bluetooth, a built-in DVD player. I also connected the steering wheel control so I can control the stereo. In this video, I will show you all the features on this unit and how to install it. So stay tuned. Inside this box is the brand new Pumpkin Android 8.0 Double Din Car Stereo with a 6.2 inch color LCD touchscreen. Let me unbox this and I'll show you what comes with this unit. Here's a user manual. Here's a wiring harness. In this bag, we have the AV cable, GPS antenna, USB cable, Wi-Fi cable. Here's a look at everything you get with this unit. Starting on the left side is the AV cable. This has audio output, subwoofer output, so you can connect those to an external amplifier. It also has video output for external monitor and audio input. This wiring harness is for power and speaker output. This is your Wi-Fi antenna, GPS antenna, mounting screws, external microphone, USB cable, and also the input for the external microphone right here. This is the wiring diagram, user manual, and this is the Pumpkin Android 8.0 car stereo. Looking at the front of the unit, you'll notice at the top there is a slot for DVD. This unit does have a built-in DVD player, which is very nice. Most Android stereos don't have one. On the left side, we have the microphone, home button, return button, mode button, volume adjust, GPS memory car slot, and micro SD memory car slot. On the right side, we have the eject button. Here's a look at the back, and I'll show you how to connect the antenna and the wiring harness to this unit. So starting at the top left-hand corner, we have the GPS antenna. Now the base of this antenna is magnetic. Below the GPS antenna is a plug for the power and speaker output. And at the bottom, there's a 15 amp fuse. One thing I should mention is at the end of this wiring harness is this ISO power connector. It has a speaker output and the power wire. I'll be cutting these off and then connecting this to my factory stereo wiring harness. Over here on the right is a connector for the Wi-Fi antenna. The USB cable will connect to this connector right here in the middle. If you want to connect this stereo to an external amplifier, you can connect the AV cable to these two connectors on the right and this connector at the top left-hand corner. Lastly, the microphone will connect to this green connector on the USB cable. And these are all the connections you have on this stereo. So I've gone ahead and connected my 12 volt power supply to this car stereo. And so far I connected the yellow wire, which is the constant 12 volt, the red wire, which is the ignition 12 volt, and the black wire, which is ground. I also connected two speakers to the front left and front right output. Now I'll turn on the power supply. This unit does have fast boot. What that means is after the initial boot up, if you turn off the ignition and you turn it back on, the unit will start up in one second, very fast. Now, before I go over the user interface on this unit, let me quickly talk about the spec and features on this unit. This stereo is running on Android 8.0 Oreo. It has four gigabyte of RAM, 32 gigabyte of ROM. The CPU is an octa-core processor at 1.5 gigahertz. It has Bluetooth 4.0 with a built-in microphone and an external microphone for hands-free calling. The Bluetooth can also be used for audio streaming from your mobile device to the stereo. It has both an AM and FM radio tuner with RDS. The unit has a built-in four channel amplifier chip. It outputs four by 50 watt. It has GPS navigation and supports both online and offline navigation app. On the wiring harness, you'll find the key one and key two wire that's used for steering wheel control. Now this unit only supports resistance based analog signal from the steering wheel. There's a built-in micro SD memory card slot and a USB port with those, you can load your own music or video files. Now this unit supports a maximum of 128 gigabyte memory size. It also has built-in Wi-Fi, so you can connect this to an AP or access point, or if you tether your phone to this mobile device, you'll have internet access. The screen you're looking at is a 6.2 inch color LCD touchscreen. The resolution on it is 800 by 480. Now there are some additional optional features this unit support, but you do need to purchase additional modules. For example, it does support OBD2 diagnostic, 4G internet, and reverse camera input. After turning on the unit, this is the home screen that you'll see. We have the day and time at the top left hand corner. The radio is on the right side. At the bottom are shortcuts to some of the apps. Let's go into settings. Let's go to system. 
about machine. Here you see it's running Android 8.0. If you want to listen to the radio, you can press the power button right here. Or go into the radio app. Here you can tune. Forward and back. Now if you find a station you want to save, press one of the presets on the right side. You can give it a name if you want. Press OK. There are 30 presets you can save to. Now if you want to direct tune to a specific station, press the keypad right here. Now you can key in the frequency. Press OK. You can also set the equalizer, balance, and fader. Go back home. Let's select all apps. Here's Play Store. Let's place that onto one of the pages here. If you're looking for a good free offline navigation software, go to Play Store and type in here, H-E-R-E, -E, and you'll find here we go. This is a very good software that many people don't know about, and it works both online and offline. So go ahead and install this. Let's go over the shortcuts you see at the bottom of this home page. Starting on the left, we have the navigation button. If you press that, by default, it'll open up Google Maps. Now, if you want to change to a different app, I'll show you where you can go to select a different app. Go to Settings, Car, Navigation, Navigation Application Options. Here I've installed Waze. Another good navigation to use is Here We Go. This one will work offline and online. It's a great free navigation software. So let me select that right now. Go back home. Now when you select Navigation, it will open up the Here Navigation app. Next one over is Bluetooth. To do the initial pairing, what you'll need to do is turn on the Bluetooth on your phone and scan for available devices. Here I found this device, Car Kit. Select that. The pin is 0000. Okay. After pairing, if you select the handset icon right here, the keypad will open up. Here you can dial out a number to make a call. You have reached the National Weather Service in Boulder, Colorado. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it now. Please make your selection from the phone. Here we have the music app. Open this up and you can play music off your USB memory stick that I've inserted here. Next one over is video. Here you can select video files from your USB memory stick. Pumped to be here, sir. Good. Well, first things first. Let's see what you got. Next movie. <laughs> The last shortcut on the right is settings. If we go back into car setting, the first menu is element. Here you can set the color of the buttons on the left side. So right now it's blue. If we select red, now it will be red. Green, yellow. Let's go back to blue. If you look in the middle of the home page, there are two circles. The one at the top is a custom UI made by Pumpkin. If I select that, you'll get this user interface. On this screen, you can access Bluetooth, settings, video, music, amplifier, navigation, and radio. If you want to switch back to the Android launcher, press this icon right here, and now you're back to the default one. Let me show you how to mirror your mobile device to this Android head unit. First, you need to connect a USB cable from the head unit to your mobile device. Next, open Easy Connect app. And on your mobile device, you also need to install Easy Connect app you also need to go into settings, system, and turn on debug mode. So here you see the image from your mobile device mirrored onto the head unit right here. To install the stereo into this Honda vehicle, you're gonna need an installation hardware kit like this one right here. This one has a shape of the radio bezel. 
and then you install the aftermarket radio into this bezel. You also need a stereo wiring harness like this one here. And for this Honda, you also need an antenna plug that you see right here. So let's start with prepping the wiring harness that you see right here. On the left side, this is the wiring harness from the pumpkin Android stereo. And this is the wiring diagram for the stereo. You will notice I've also gone ahead and cut off the ISO connector for the speaker output and the power wire. On the right side is the stereo connector. On this end, you'll connect this to the car's factory harness. On the other end, where these wires come out, you'll be connected to the wires on the pumpkin Android stereo. What you want to do is match up the wiring color that you see right here for power, for speaker output, and match it to these wires over here. And we'll be using butt connectors to crimp all these wires together. Let me show you how to do a couple of these. The white wire is the front left speaker. The one with the black line is the speaker negative. And the other wire is going to be the speaker positive. So we'll take one of these butt connectors. Crimp this down. Now we'll take the other wire from the other harness and connect this up. So this wire is connected now. Move on to the next one. And we'll continue on with the rest of the speaker wires and also the power wire. Now on the Android unit, there is a break-in wire. We're going to ground this wire and this will allow you to watch video while the car is in motion. On the Honda, you also have this antenna plug and there is a blue wire. This needs to be connected to ignition 12 volt. This will power the radio antenna amplifier. On the Android wiring harness, there's also this orange wire. It wasn't labeled. This is the dimmer or illumination wire. You do need to connect this to the illumination wire on a stereo harness. So when you turn on the headlight at night, it will dim the display. So these are all the connections that we need at this time. The only two wires we'll need to connect in the vehicle is going to be the key one and the ground for steering wheel control. Here's a look at the installation kit for the Honda Odyssey. Now this one I have here has this bezel, which I had to file down the top edge and the side to make it fit for this aftermarket radio. Now, when you install these type of kits, typically you do have to modify the dimension of the opening, so we'll fit that radio. So this trim will go into here like this. Now we can fit this bezel directly onto the stereo. Now we can install the side bracket. Now the last time I installed the Android 6.0 double din stereo, I used a kit from Skosh, and that kit is a lot better than this one. This one is made by a company called X Scorpion, and there are a lot more pieces involved. I'm not too crazy about the way they designed this. It was a little cheaper and I thought I'd try it out, but definitely the Scotch installation kit is a lot better. The last thing you need to do is install a screw on both sides and this will secure the unit onto the front bezel right here. Now the screw that came with the unit is not long enough, so you do have to provide your own, but make sure it's not too long because there are circuit boards inside the unit. Here's a look at the Android 6 stereo that I'll be pulling out. The only two wires left are the steering wheel control wire that I used last time. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these off. Here's a look at the stereo, all ready to go. There's the wiring harness, microphone, USB cable, GPS antenna, and the Wi-Fi antenna right here. So let's take this to the car and get it installed. Here's a new stereo. Let's connect everything up. Starting with the USB cable, I'm going to connect this USB port to an extension cable that I ran last time. It goes to the glove box, and in the glove box, I have my USB memory stick for music. Next, we'll connect the stereo harness. Here's the antenna cable. Now the last two connections I need to make is the steering wheel control and in my last install video for the Android 6.0 stereo I did show you step by step on how to test it and make sure you have the right wire 
I'm going to show that to you right now. So if you look at this gray connector, not the big one, okay, there are two of them. This smaller one with 20 pins on it, I'm probing two of these wires, pins 6 and 7. And then when I press any of the buttons for the audio control on the steering wheel, you'll see the resistance change. So right now this one is volume up, it's 355 ohm. Volume down, 100 ohm. Mode, 3.74 kilo ohm. Channel up, 1.69 kilo ohm. And channel down, 0.772 kilo ohm. Let me give you a closer look of this connector with the two wires. So this one here, as you can see, has 10 pins on top and 10 pins at the bottom. And right now I'm probing pin 6 and 7. And the wire color on this one is brown on pin 6 and brown or tan color on the pin 7. Now one thing you need to keep in mind is the steering wheel control system on these Android stereos will only work for resistive type of steering wheel control. And that's what this Honda has. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these two wires from the stereo to the factory wire. This one is the key ground. And this one is key one. So these are the only two wires you'll need for steering wheel control. Both the GPS antenna and Wi-Fi antenna will be placed at the back of the dash right here. Using the double-sided tape, stick the Wi-Fi antenna and the GPS antenna onto a solid surface. Before you put everything back together, turn on the stereo. Make sure everything works. Now we'll program the steering wheel control. Go to settings. Go to car. Steering wheel keys. Press steering wheel buttons. So right now I'm going to press the volume up button on the steering wheel. Here is volume up. Select that. Select OK. Now I'll press the volume down button. Here's volume down. OK. Next I'll select channel up on the steering wheel. I'm going to program this to the next button. Channel down. Previous button right here. Okay. The last button on the steering wheel is mode button. And I'm going to program mute on this. Okay. Save it. And that's it. Go back home. If I turn on the radio, I can use the steering wheel control. Volume down. Volume up. Mode will mute it. Channel up and down will change the station. For the microphone, I'm running the wire underneath the driver's dash over to the A pillar. I place the microphone at the corner of the driver's side. Here in the glove box is a USB extension cable, and here I've connected my USB memory stick so I can play my music and videos. If you want to change these buttons, press and hold it, and you can reassign it to a different app. On the next page, I have some additional apps I installed. If you want to play music, here I can play music from my USB memory stick. Hope I want to watch a video from the memory stick. I can't believe these guys are idiots. I can also watch a DVD. Now if you want Wi-Fi connectivity on this unit, the best way is to enable tethering on your mobile device and you'll be able to go online and use Waze or GasBuddy or browse the internet. Also another very nice feature on this pumpkin Android unit is a quick boot. So if I turn off the ignition right now, you see it turn off. Now if I turn on the ignition, the unit comes right back on within seconds. With my old Android 6.0 unit, it requires a complete boot up every time you turn off the ignition. Here's a look at the HEAR navigation software. After 1,000 feet, turn left and then enter the highway Interstate 85A403 towards Interstate 85 South, Atlanta. Right now it's working offline, so you can download maps for all the states. After a quarter of a mile, enter the highway Interstate 85A403. If your cell phone plan allows you to enable tethering, you can
can have internet access on this radio. Here you're looking at Waze. Well, I hope you enjoy watching this review and installation video of this brand new Android 8.0 head unit from the company Pumpkin. So far, I really like the design and functionality of this unit. It's very easy to use and the sound quality is very good. If you want to learn more about this Pumpkin Android 8.0 head unit, I will include the link in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comment section below. And don't forget to click on a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.